very much for staying on with us. This is Market Sense. Uh, 8716 on the index right now. Very quiet as we speak. Uh, let's get in Richard Jen, Technical Analyst, Equities at Angel Broking, who's with us on the show as well. And uh, Richard, give us a sense as to what exactly your advice is on the markets at this juncture. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, overall, if you see then the uh, last few markets took resistance near the higher end of a megaphone pattern and the post Monday's gap down opening which we have seen and that gap has not been able to fill yet. So according to the gap, unless we markets again move above this Monday's gap area, the short term trend definitely would be negative. Now if we observe the weekly and the monthly charts, then the trend is still positive. So the corrective move which is, go which is going on right now, it's just a correction within an uptrend. We are expecting this correction to extend on the lower side up to 8600 and probably on any pullback moves in a day or two, 87, 80, 87, 60 is going to act as a stiff resistance. So those who are short term traders, we are advising them to go uh, short in the on Nifty around 8760 and expecting a target of about 8600 in next week. Hmm. Okay, and what about your stock specific ideas at this hour, uh, Richard, what is it that you are recommending? As for uh, short term trading, uh, uh, firstly we are recommending to go long in looping over here. Now within this corrective phase in the markets, we have seen that specifically pharma stocks are holding out. So we are expecting some sort of pullback move or outperformance within the pharma space. So looping uh, on the intraday charts, it has formed a, a, a hammer pattern uh, on the early charts. Also the trend following indicators on the daily charts are in the buy mode. So I think a pullback move could be expected in Lupin. This probability of formation of an inverted head and shoulders pattern which is a uh, bullish pattern and hence with a stop loss below 1520 one can go long around current levels for a target of 1588 in about 2-3 to three trading sessions. Um, another call is a sell call in LIC housing finance. Although the broader trend for the stock is up, but recently we have seen that the stock has has corrected along with the markets after formation of a bearish harmonic pattern at higher levels. So uh, in line with the market's move, we are expecting further correction in the stock. One can go short on minor bounces okay, we'll uh, with stop loss. Richard, we'll just come to you. Hold that thought. Uh, you have a sell on LIC Housing Finance. We'll just revisit that strategy in a bit. But uh, uh, DRIL, they've got an order from Power Grid of about 100 crores. Uh, we know Mason, uh, who's director of strategy at TRIL, uh, joins in with a quick perspective. Uh, uh, good to have you, sir, on the show. Could you outline uh, the exact nature of this order and the execution period? Uh, hi, there's Vinod there. Uh, we got this order from PGCIR. This is for the North East projects of uh, PGCIR, which involves 132 kV and 220 kV transformers. Total, there are 29 transformers and the value is about 110 crores. We have to execute this order over a period of uh, 30 odd months. Uh, delivery will start sometime next year and we'll give it progressively because the reason being that uh, in the Northeast it takes a little longer time because uh, the terrain is such. So that's why it's more phased out that starting till early and then ending till about 30 months. Mr. Masan, give us a sense as to what the current order book stands at and with this 103 crore rupee order, where do you see it headed? Yeah. We have already got the total orders What because last time, uh, or last week on your channel, I said that we have what, 860. In the meantime, and I said that I'm expecting about 120 more and that's what this was included in that. So today we stand at about close to 960. Right, and what does this do for your total order book, sir? At the moment, about 965 to 970, I think. Okay. Are there any other such orders that are uh, in the pipeline as of now that you're looking to bag? Anything strategic on the anvil? Nothing that big, but something or other keeps coming because the market is doing well now and we are well, well poised to uh, take the deliveries. We deliver the transformers, we're delivering on time. They, performance in the last quarter was okay, this quarter also hopefully should be well and uh, we expect to end this year, uh, as I said earlier, 800 plus for the invoicing. That's the invoicing. Uh, I missed your total order book position. Uh, could you just repeat that number? Sorry? Your total order book with this order of At the moment is about 970. 970 crores. Okay, and you're saying about 800 would be invoiced to this year itself? Yeah, can, that includes what we've invoiced in the, so far in the last five months, but uh, total at the end of the year will be about 970. Sorry, 800 plus. 
Mr. Masan, let you go on that. No, thanks very much for taking time out and giving us a view as to how things are shaping up. And congratulations on that order win. TRIL, as Thank we speak, is up a good 4% in trade. Shift gears then from our own markets, focusing on what's going on across the globe and the European markets. Well, they got off to a pretty okay start, very flat footing for now as we speak. The FTSE is just about quiet, the DAX marginally in the green and the peripheral markets aren't looking all that buoyant. Clearly what's going to be in focus is the Bank of England and the kind of action that we expect from there. Michael Van Dalken, Head of Research at Ascendo Markets, now joins in on the show. Michael, thanks for joining in. Give us a sense as to what uh, the views are on the Bank of England and the kind of trade that we're seeing right now. Awfully tepid. Yeah, it's a very, uh, very muted start today. Uh, we're just, just negative, but not too much. I think markets are still kind of dragging their feet, really. Uh, there's, there's still a lot of anxiety, really, regarding the outlook for, for global monetary policy. Um, you know, investors are still pretty desperate to hear that things are going to stay highly accommodative or that even more stimulus could be on the way um, to keep the party going, or, or at least to hear that policy is not likely to, to become tighter imminently. I think that applies most to the Fed next week. Um, all the while, macro data remains very choppy and mixed, and, uh, and we get concerned about uh, a waning potency of, of global stimulus measures, and that uh, you know the options are, are running dry, especially for someone like the ECB. Uh, so we've got a, a big lineup of, of central banks over the next week or so, the Bank of England and the Swiss National Bank today. And then of course, Allow me, Michael, to interrupt you there. Let's listen in to Vishal Sikka speaking. Well, we cannot talk about it. <laughs> but we are taking some very tough measures to ensure that the system is a, uh, is a secure one. I mean, uh, security is one of the ongoing threats and challenges. Yeah. Uh, there are many, uh, many pockets where there is uh, weak preparedness right at this moment. Uh, but, you know, we have time between now and then to address some of these uh, and the government is actually extremely keen to address that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Between what he was saying, but I think I, Idly was putting out his uh, thoughts on how things will uh, move in transition, uh, especially given the order slowdown that they are witnessing from key markets. Yeah, but right now it's been in focus with respect to setting up some of those delivery centers as well in Russia and Canada. But as the sector is on uh, the whole, IT has definitely been in the limelight on the downside. Tell you what, we'll slip into a quick break right here on the show. Come right back with some more market perspectives. Stay tuned to Market Sense. Back with Market Sense, let's cut across to Vishal Sikha of Infosys in conversation with ET Now's Ruchi Bhatia. ET Now, let me first begin by talking about uh, you had a meeting with the finance minister today on the preparedness of GST. Uh, where are we and how do things stand as of now? It is a uh, very important project for the country and uh, it is uh, uh, something that the and the finance minister and the prime minister are extremely keen on and uh, it is something that we are very proud of and so we are putting, Praveen and I are putting all our best uh, efforts into that. It is a project that we are all uh, hopeful uh, and we are working towards making something that we can all be proud of. Are we, are we ready uh, to hit the GST, you know, uh, uh, as far as the deadline is concerned for April 1st, 2017? Is the GST network uh, ready? Uh, where are things, uh, you know, uh, as far as uh, the review that you give to the financial There are lots and lots of moving parts. It is an extremely complex and ambitious um, uh, exercise. Uh, it involves banks, it involves small businesses, big businesses, taxpayers, states. Many states are not ready, many small cities are not ready. So it is going to be a, um, a hell of a hell of a challenge, but uh, we are incredibly excited about it. So, I am, so uh, yeah, simple answer is, we know this worried sitting back there, but yes, we are going to be ready. So what are the key challenges, you know, because you had a meeting with the finance minister today, any key challenges that you can highlight for us? There are many, there are many around, uh, uh, around technology readiness, cultural readiness and so forth, but, uh, but you know, that is how change happens. All right. Thanks, Ajahn, sir. Thank, Thank you so much. All right. Vishal Sikha saying there are challenges for GST implementation, but they are, uh, you know, racing against time to ensure that the infrastructure is in place uh, and GST is implemented well ahead of the deadline.
Uh, let's just get uh, Richard's uh, strategies uh, for this hour of trade. Uh, Richard, uh, what is it that you uh, would be recommending in addition to the strategies recommended earlier? Yeah, so uh, we already recommended to go along in Lupin and uh, sell in LIC housing. And my last recommendation uh, would be to uh, go along in Glenmark Pharma. Probably after one, one and a half months of consolidation phase, last week the stock gave breakout of the consolidation. Uh, so if you observe the RSI movement, then the RSI has taken support around the levels of 40 and have started moving higher now. So which is a typically an, uh, uh, an uh, indication of, uh, of an uptrend. So we are uh, uh, assuming that uh, this uptrend would be continue and we are expecting on the higher side the stock to rally up to 980 in the next couple of weeks time frame. So keeping a stop loss below 855, positional traders should go long in Glenmark Pharma at current levels for target around 980 in two weeks of time frame. There you have it, sell on LIC, buy on Lupin and Glenmark. And on that note, we wind it down right here on Market Sense. Thanks for watching. Up next, Markets at Lunch.